you're watching the Aussie Boom Guru, and today we're going to run through the fourth part of my feasibility series in Revit. So today we're looking at how to schedule areas and how to represent mass floors uh, by department as well. So we previously looked at setting up site controls, building massing, and how to manage them in design options, and we're moving on from there. Later on we'll look at Dynamo and some site analysis techniques, and we'll also look at Power BI and how to visualize feasibility data. So we've already set up our mass floors, and we've set our mass styles um, to re represent a color by department, but currently our mass floors have no data in them. They don't actually report um, what department they belong to, so the mass and the mass floor are disconnected. So today we're going to look at how to Im imbue these with the data they need to schedule the area. Um, we're also going to look at GFA, so gross floor area versus gross building area, because essentially the, the masses that we've made represent the full building area per floor, which isn't actually correct. So in, in Australia, for example, uh, the gross floor area doesn't count certain things such as elevator shafts, um, lobbies above the first floor, and rooms that will house equipment for the building's operation. Um, so in this case, we need to actually look at using something like an efficiency rate to convert our GBA into an approximate GFA based on a likely percentage of overall floor usage. So what we usually do in the Australian market is at very early stages, we'll convert this using a formula versus actually modeling all the lift cores and rises and things that will take away uh, GFA from the GBA. So we're gonna use that today in Revit. So the workflow is we're gonna set up what's called some floor keys using a key schedule in Revit to establish these floor types and control some of the data such as the associated efficiency rates. We're then gonna set up some filters just to graphically override the floors as opposed to the masses and then just adopt a view template to standardize the graphical appearance of the mass floors in each design option. And then we're gonna build some schedules to convert our GBA to GFA and also look at our percentage of overall GFA uh, per department type, such as commercial or residential, in order to analyze our options against each other. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into Revit. So we're just gonna be starting with the model that we've finished with. The only thing I've done since that is I've also added a new portion of the mass uh, for what I've called mixed use. So part of that is the bar and the lobby, but otherwise it's the same breakdown as what we had before. So in one option we have commercial and residential, and in the other option, we have just all commercial. Um, but in each case, we have a car park and a mixed use component. So we're going to need to set up some floor types uh, in order to manage these. So the first thing we're going to do is set up what's called a key schedule. So if we just go up to view schedules and we'll make a schedules and quantities, we're going to make a mass floor schedule. But instead of making a standard mass floor schedule, we're going to select this schedule keys option. And we'll just call this mass floor key the name of the schedule and we need to actually establish a key name at this point i'm just going to call it in this case uh floor type so this is like what what type of program the floor is dedicated to and what we need to do is add a couple of parameters that the key is going to control so one of them we'll use is called efficiency note that you can't make these shared parameters they have to be project parameters and we're going to make the efficiency a number that we times our gba by and we're also just gonna create one called uh, code in this case, just a text-based field. Okay, and other than that, if you go okay, it will create what's called a key schedule. So by default, there's no data in a key schedule. What you do is add keys to it in the form of data rows. So we'll just add maybe five keys and we'll call the key name, say commercial, uh, residential, sorry residential and we'll just rename this one to car park bar uh, lobby and we're going to add a special key that we're not using a mass to represent which is plant and we're just going to establish some efficiency rates in terms of what the gfa would be for each of these so residential will say that we're working at an 85 percent efficiency rate so 0.85 our bar will use the same figure Actually, residential will say 0.9 and bar will say 0.9, but commercial will say 0.85. Car park will say 0.1, just because there might be a little bit of GFA in the car park, such as um, car parks not dedicated to council parking. Uh, for the lobby, we'll say that we're working at an efficiency rate of 0.9, and our plant, again, will say 0.8. So you do have to count zones like mechanical equipment zones in your GFA. So now for the codes that we're looking at. So for the bar, we're just gonna call it bar. Car park, we'll just do CAR. Commercial, we'll do COM. And the only reason that we have these is because we need to still filter these parameters to change the colors of our actual our floors themselves. Because you can't filter by a schedule key, but you can schedule by a parameter that the key controls. Okay, 
So how do we apply these keys? So if we just jump into option 2B and I just activate this design option and I isolate mass floors with isolate category or IC. Um, at the moment we're filtering them based on their department, uh, their, oh, sorry, their overall area. I'm just gonna get rid of these filters. And what we're gonna do is instead, we'll just select all our floors first and pick our most common type of floor. And you'll find that the scheduled key has appeared in the properties of each mass floor. And now we have those options we set up. If I pick commercial, you'll notice that all these floors automatically know their code and they also automatically know their efficiency rate as well. So this is how we can lock in particular values. So sort of like making types within types. Um, from there, I'm just gonna establish all the residential floors. So I'll just marquee these ones up to here. And all you have to do is change the key. And as you'd expect, when you change the key, all the other codes will change with it as well. So really straightforward, um, but a really powerful control system you can establish. From there, we'll just say this is the bar. And let's add a plant for at the top and the bottom of the stack. So we'll just identify these as plant floors. And then this is our lobby floor. And our bottom two are going to be our car park. Okay. So what I've already set up in my model at the moment is some filters, uh, which can represent my mass floors. So if I just jump in here, I've made a couple called bar, car park, commercial, lobby, and essentially they're going to look for one of the schedule key parameters. So notice that my floor type parameter isn't present. Um, so my key is not present, but my parameter that's driving is, which is code. So I can say that if code equals bar, that is what the filter will find. And likewise, we just do that for our remaining. Uh, so code equals car park. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply these filters and then establish a view template so that we only really have to do this once in our model. And we'll do code equals lobby. So I'll try not to do too much repetition in the setup. I've got a couple of models that I'll use to skip ahead a couple of steps because there will be a little bit of repetition in rolling this out to various uh, design options. But I'll just set this up once. Okay, so at that point we can apply these filters to this view. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna turn off my levels as well. So I'm just gonna go to levels and turn it off as a category. And I'm just gonna apply my mass floors filters. And all you have to do is override the pattern and you override the color and also the surface pattern to solid. And what you'll get is basically a graphic override. Sorry, I need to make that visible. Likewise, we just make this green. Now I won't do all the mass floors. I'll just leave these filters here, but I'll just do a couple so you can see you can see what it's doing. Actually, no, I will do them all. It won't, it won't take too long. So just bear with me. Lobby will be yellow. And obviously you can pick different colors to your mass colors if you want to, but ultimately we're just gonna make our masses transparent in this case. So I'll pick a slightly different yellow for my bar level just so I can differentiate it. And my plant level, I'll make it like a dark gray. Okay. And at the moment, if I okay this, you won't really see the impact, but if I go in and just add another filter for mass, so in this case, all this filter is, is a filter that's applied to the category for mass and none of its subcategories with no rules. So I'm just gonna add mass and I'm gonna say that mass is 100% transparent. You could obviously make that 75%, 80%. But now you can see the floors and how they relate to each respective program. Uh, so that's much clearer a way to represent the program of a building um, versus the mass color itself. Um, as I said, you can change the transparency of the mass to say 80%, so you get a slight tinge from your mass colors as well. Uh, it's up to you what you think the most effective graphic style is um, to, to get the outcome you're after. From there, what you can do is actually create a view template. So we can go view templates from the view tab create template from current view, and we'll just call this 3D template. And we don't want to apply all settings, so we're gonna not apply design options because we want that to be independently controlled per view. And you may recall we have a couple of generic model subcategories that represent different stages of demolition on the site, depending on whether you're doing a half or a full site demolition. So we don't want to apply that either, but we do want to apply filters and pretty much everything else. So if we okay that, and we lock in our view template under the view template settings, you won't expect any change to happen to this one, but if we went to another option, for example, such as 2C, and we really quickly just reapply our mass floor subcategories by schedule key, 
which I'll do now just to show you how quick it is. So usually I pick the predominant category first and then I pick the, the unique flaws after that and I override them to the actual. So obviously there's no change occurring yet because um, we haven't set our mass floor style well, and we haven't set our template either. So if I just pick my two car park levels and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so nothing's happened yet. However, if I apply that view template, we'll expect those, those filters to take effect. Great, and that's how easy it is to standardize a visual style across all your, all your design options and also get scheduled keys. And there you go, so I can just make those transparent as well. And that's how we can get a more consistent graphic outcome. I can half tone the surrounds as well, so you can see through it. And there you go, you get a bit of consistency between all your respective options. And there we go. Um, what I'm gonna do is just jump ahead one step because now we're actually gonna schedule uh, these outcomes. So we're just gonna open up uh, one that I've templated but not scheduled. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of options now that are all consistently set up. So what we need to do now is actually schedule these outcomes. So we did have an original mass floor schedule that we were working with, but we need to expand this to have more information. So we're just going to override the format of our floor area and we're going to call that GBA, our gross building area. What we need to do with that now is introduce a couple of variables into our schedule. The first one is the efficiency rate because we need to call on this in a formula, but we're going to go to formatting and just make it a hidden field so the user doesn't see it. And we're going to have another calculated field right after GBA. And the formula for this, as you might be able to guess, is going to be for GFA. And it's the GBA times the efficiency. So it'll be the floor area asterisk efficiency. And what we'll expect out of this is our, our GBA and our GFA. So I'll just move that up. What I might do is just temporarily turn on one of my design options. So I'll just say that we're looking at the commercial residential profile for the half site. So what I'll also do is just turn off my FSR for the full side of the site. So I'll make that hidden and I'll just rename this to FSR. Okay, so now we have uh, our floor, it's GBA, it's GFA, and also it's FSR. I just need to change the floor key for the plants. I think I made that one zero by accident. I need to make that 0 0.08, oh, sorry, 0 0.8. Okay, you can see that conversion occurring upon those two numbers now. The only thing we need to do now is actually change our FSR formula uh, in order to relate to the, G, the GFA instead of the GBA. So all we do is just replace this with the GFA field so that we're getting our true and correct FSR. And you can see that's now reduced to suit. Um, what you could also do with this table is you can add the floor type instead. So we'll just add that uh, just after level. And let's make level a hidden field. And we'll sort by level, but what we'll do is make it a header and we'll add a blank line after each level. And then we'll sort by floor type. And we'll turn off itemize so that all our floor types group together. And essentially we end up with row items. So if you had more than one program mass on a floor, they'd group underneath this level header. Um, so that's much easier to control and visualize each respective level, but while still getting your totals at the bottom. Note that our GFA isn't totaling. So to do that, we go to format, GFA, and we say calculate totals. And now we see our GBA, our GFA, and our FSR total. And obviously you can just toggle between design options to see different outcomes. So it's really easy to keep track of these figures. And now you can more accurately test against your maximum FSR allowed on your site. So much easier. Um, what we can also do from there as well is we can make a different sort of schedule. So we'll just, we'll, we might just, uh, we'll make a new one and we're just gonna make a mass floor schedule. So what we wanna do is find out the percentage of each type of uh, zone in the building, how much GBA it's contributing to the building and how much GFA it's contributing as well. So we're gonna sort by floor type and we'll also add floor area and we'll add efficiency and then we'll use a calculated field to generate the GFA again. So you can make these as many times as you need. So we'll just do floor area times efficiency. Okay, make it area based. And then if we go to formatting and we tell our floor area to calculate total and our GFA to calculate total, and make our efficiency a hidden field and go to sorting and we sort by floor type instead of level and we turn off itemize and we put totals at the bottom. 
we should get something that will look a little bit like, I'll just set my option, it will look a little bit like this. There. And now we can see how much floor area each respective department of the building is contributing overall. We can also get a percentage of each respective area if we need. So we just make a new calculated field and we say that we want a percentage. And we'll just call the field percentage. So we could say percentage of GFA by grand total. And now we can see what percentage each of those departments is making up of the overall design option. Um, if you were gonna make these more permanent schedules, you could actually uh, make like copies of these schedules, or you could just toggle between your design option, uh, your active design option, if you're just analyzing them on the go. So what I could do is actually free up my design option settings. And instead of locking it down, I can actually just toggle them here. I can really quickly just analyze each respective option and compare the respective numbers between them. Um, so yeah, quite simple. Um, so really what, what we've done there is just established a, an area scheduling format um, that we can move forward with uh, in, our, in our massing study. And we can take this into Power BI in a later series. Um, so we'll just save this. And that's pretty much all for today. So hopefully that all makes sense and it lets you schedule your GFA with a bit more confidence. Um, obviously the efficiency rates are up to you and your company or your standard, uh, because really what I've done there is set some rates as per what I deem as the, the likely conversion between GBA to GFA. So it depends from company to company what they expect it should be. But I know usually about 85% is a good conversion number for most floors where you know that the only thing that's gonna be taking out area is services, stairs and lifts. Um, just depends on your standard. Yeah, that's all for today. Um, so in the next part, we're gonna be looking at how to set up um, some shadow diagram studies to put on a sheet and present to your client or to whoever you're sending your drawings to. So hopefully you'll join me for that one. So thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so and leave any comments or feedback down below. Always happy to hear and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care, bye.